We begin tonight with breaking news, a fatal crash involving six cars in Claremont Mesa. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee and tonight for Carlo Chiquetto. And I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. It happened just after two o'clock this afternoon along Genesee Avenue, just north of Marlesta Drive. We're told that a man driving an SUV southbound on Genesee crossed into oncoming traffic and collided head on with another car, killing the female driver. Well, the SUV flipped over, the second car crashed into a third vehicle, and then others were also hit. The driver of the SUV and passenger inside the second vehicle were transported to Sharp Memorial with major injuries. There's no word tonight on a cause. More breaking news. This video here was taken just moments ago from the Mission Trails area where there was a call for a rescue. It happened near Calle De Vida and Colina Dorada. We're told the person being rescued injured a knee. A helicopter is now transporting the victim to the hospital. New information tonight involving a fatal officer-involved shooting in the South Bay. Chula Vista police say it all started when a man wanted on suspicion of attempted murder, carjacked a driver, and then led officers on a pursuit. It ended near Southwestern College, where police and the suspect exchanged gunfire. Armonique Griego spoke with one man who lives in a house that the suspect, identified as David Angulo, tried to break into. That wild and chaotic chain of events came to a very violent end right here in the front yard of this house. If you take a look at the truck behind me, you can see two bullet holes from the shootout that police had with that suspect. No officers were injured, but the suspect was killed. A deadly end to a chaotic series of events in Chula Vista that began Monday afternoon. I heard the rollover, then uh, sirens pretty close to it. Mark Giraldi lives at the home on Rutgers Avenue where the chaotic pursuit ended in a shootout between officers and a suspect, 33-year-old David Angulo. Bullet holes still visible in the vehicles in his driveway. I was coming up the side yard. He was coming up the front yard and my son-in-law greeted him coming to the door. Police say Angulo was wanted on an attempted murder arrest warrant and was suspected of being involved in at least three shootings in Chula Vista and San Diego. Police say once spotted, Angulo fled, carjacking someone's truck. Officers pursued, and that's when they say he crashed into another vehicle, flipping it over. Mr. Angulo exited his vehicle and then uh, tried to get into the house behind me while holding a gun in his hand. Um, a resident saw that uh, he was trying to get in the house and at that point had basically slammed the door in Mr. Angulo's face. Giraldi says the man who slammed the door was his son-in-law. Moments later, the gunfire began just outside their house after police say Angulo pointed a gun at officers and refused several commands. They were wide open in the front yard while he was returning fire at them under the car. He was ducking in and out of the car. How did a bullet not go through the house full of people? There's no bullet holes in the house, but the, the bullets went on for probably five minutes, which was a lot of, I mean, it was, it was terrifying. Angulo was shot and killed. No one in the house was injured. And while he did express condolences for Angulo's family, Uraldi also thanked officers for the work they did in keeping the community safe. I went to each one of them and tried to get across how much we appreciated their bravery and then their control of the situation. And again, nobody inside the home was injured. Despite these bullet holes, you can see how close they were to the house in the back of this truck. Police say they are in the very beginning of this investigation and they're still trying to determine who fired the first shots, but they did say that the suspect pointed a gun at officers. Monique Griego, News 8. A fire caused damage at a bar in North Park this morning. It was reported just after 9 at the Air Conditioned Lounge. That's on 30th Street near Adams Avenue. Crews arrived to find flames coming from the back, and they quickly put out the fire. No injuries were reported. A back patio was also damaged, but the building itself was not. Investigators say it's believed some rags from a recent staining project may have sparked that fire. A reward is being offered tonight for any information leading to the arrest of a man accused of starting a fire at a Little Italy restaurant. Surveillance video shows the shirtless suspect walk up to a dumpster outside of Mona Lisa Italian Foods on Saturday, take a lighter out of his pocket, and then light the trash on fire. That fire caused about $32,000 in damage. This is a Crime Stoppers case. If you have any information, you're asked to call the number on your screen.
California is reporting its highest single day number of coronavirus cases, 11,554. Here in San Diego County, 385 new cases were reported today out of more than 9,000 tests. That is a positive rate of 4.3 percent below the 14 day rolling average of 5.8 percent. That's good news. The total number of cases now stands at 24,520. More than 17,000 have recovered. Nine new deaths bring that total to 487. County leaders are urging San Diegans to help do their part to stop the spread of coronavirus. This comes after three weeks of a case rate above the state standards that has forced some businesses to close once again. News 8's Brandon Lewis explains the actions they want from you. Brandon? At Barbara Lee and Marcella, we continue to see our coronavirus case numbers rise in San Diego. So health officials say it's really in all of our hands to do our part to keep the numbers as low as possible. They say it's about individual responsibility and doing small things to try to keep the case ratio down. Four months into the pandemic and we've learned a lot about coronavirus and how it spreads. The governor says the next few weeks are critical to getting things under control. As it is, we have the lowest hospital capacity since April with just 28% of beds available. So what can we do? Health officials say it's simple things you've already heard. Maintain distance from others, wash your hands often, and wear a face covering. There's proof these things work. In May, there were just eight community outbreaks, but now as some get lax about gatherings and more businesses reopen, that number jumped to 47 and counting this month. Remember, coronavirus spreads easiest when you're within six feet of an infected person and then you breathe in droplets of the virus. So as hard as it is, socially and physically distance. Soap and water are essential in stopping the virus. By now, you've heard to wash your hands for 20 seconds. Why is that? Look at your hands closely. There are a lot of small lines where the virus can hide. 20 seconds gives soap time to clean the cracks. Coronavirus, known for its pointy crown appearance under a microscope, has an outer layer that scientists call a membrane of oily lipid molecules. That's no match for soap, which destroys the virus. Finally, wear a face covering in public. It's not only the law, but it's great at stopping an asymptomatic person from spreading the virus. The head of the CDC said, quote, if we could get everybody to wear a mask right now, I really think in the next four, six, eight weeks, we could bring this epidemic under control, which is why health officials say where the pandemic goes is really up to us. And it's important to remember that coronavirus case numbers, the positive results can be lagging indicators to the immediate action. So it could take that four, six, eight week period that the CDC director mentioned for our actions to show. Barbara Lee and Marcella. All right, thanks, Brandon. Today, President Trump took to the podium to give his first coronavirus briefing in months without members of the White House task force. This as the U.S. surpassed the 1,000 deaths in one day mark for the first time since early June. The president, repeatedly referring to COVID-19 as the China virus, said the pandemic will get worse before it gets better. Skylar Henry has the latest from Washington. President Trump returned to the podium for regular coronavirus task force briefings as his poll numbers drop and new COVID cases in the U.S. rise. Many countries are suffering very, very, very badly. We've done much better than most. The presumptive Democratic nominee, Joe Biden, disagrees, saying the president's pandemic response is negligent. He's quit on you and he's quit on this country. On Capitol Hill, Trump administration officials and lawmakers continue negotiations on a phase four relief bill that's estimated to cost at least a trillion dollars. So far, Republicans are split. I'm alarmed that we're talking about spending another trillion dollars we don't have. Right now, the Republicans are playing a dangerous game of chicken with pandemic relief. Republicans say they want funding for reopening schools to be the centerpiece for the next coronavirus bill. The U.S. Surgeon General says precautions taken outside of schools will be a huge factor in the timetable for children to return to the classroom. The biggest determinant of whether or not we can go back to school actually has little to nothing to do with the actual schools. It's your background transmission rate. Folks need to wear face coverings. Folks need to practice social distancing. Monday, President Trump tweeted a picture of himself wearing a face mask, calling it patriotic after only wearing one once publicly. He's tested more than anyone multiple times a day, um, and we believe that he's acting appropriately. Administration officials say a deal on the next stimulus bill could come by the end of the month. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. 
President Trump released a memo today calling for an unprecedented change to the U.S. census count. It seeks to bar people in the U.S. illegally from being counted in congressional reapportionment. The reapportionment is the redistribution of seats in the House of Representatives, and it's based on changes in population. Governor Gavin Newsom released a statement saying, in part, counting every person in our country through the census is a principle so foundational that it's written in our Constitution. This latest action by the administration to exclude documented immigrants when determining representation in Congress, rooted in racism and xenophobia, is a blatant attack on our institutions and our neighbors. The Center for American Liberty is taking legal action in response to Governor Gavin Newsom's reopening guidelines for California schools. Today, it announced it filed the hashtag OpenCASchools lawsuit on behalf of nine families. They want an injunction on the governor's plan and to ultimately give parents the choice of whether to send their kids back to school. That is not a decision that the state can or should make. The governor does not have the authority, quite frankly, to do what he has done in his decree, and that is outlined in one of the claims in our case. Under the governor's guidelines, in-person learning can resume when a school district's county has been off the state's COVID-19 watch list for two weeks. As the pandemic continues across the country and here in San Diego County, so does the need for blood donations. The Red Cross held a blood drive at Perry Ford in Poway today. Walk-ins aren't allowed right now because of social distancing guidelines, but appointments were booked up today at the drive. Giving back to the community, paying it forward, uh, just trying to do a small portion of what we do and helping everybody in the, the current pandemic that we're in. The Red Cross is asking anyone who is able to, to sign up for an appointment to donate online. You can go to redcrossblood.org. News 8's Kyle Kraska will also be hosting our next Celebration of Heroes Blood Drive next month on August 18th at Pechanga Arena. You can save your spot starting Friday at cbs8.com.